Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Colorful and today we will learn translation. You should first watch part 1 and then you can continue with part 2. But so far let's remember what we learned the part 1. First learn the translation machinery. mRNA mature in eukaryotes with 5 cap and polytail. tRNA ribosome protein factors amyristyl tRNA synthesis. And prokaryotic initiation, shy darkness sequence on mRNA binds to the 16S rRNA, charged tRNA plays in P side, amino acid FMAD tRNA, 30S pre initiation complex, large subunit binds, 70S initiation complex, protein factors involve IF1, 2, and 3. Uh, eukaryotic initiation uses a cap and scan model, scans across the 5 UTR until start codon, mRNA modified and 43S pre-initiation complex plus modified mRNA equal to 48S initiation complex, 48S initiation complex plus large unit, ATS initiation complex. EIF protein factors also we learned that. In this video, we will learn elongation and termination. Okay, let's start with elongation. Can only take place the initiation complex is made. The correct positioner tRNAi at the P site can now allow the stepwise addition of amino acids. Elongation factors are needed to help this process. And then we say here the prokaryotic initiation and also we say eukaryotic initiation. Three events occur during the elongation. First, correct loading of amino cell tRNA into A side of ribosome to match codon. Second, formation of peptide bond between amino cell tRNA in A side and peptide chain attack to the peptidyl tRNA in P side. Peptidyl transferase reaction. Third one, the subsequent peptidyl tRNA in the A side and its associated codon in mRNA must be translocated to P site. In here, we are seeing the chain elongation in eukaryote. First, you need to know that when you see EF, which means it is the elongation factors, it will be easy for you to remember. Let's start. Once ATS initiation complex with the tRNAi is in the P site, second acetyl tRNA in complex with EF1 alpha GTP is bound to the A site. Second, EF1 alpha GTP is bound to the various mRNA cell tRNAs and diffuse into the A site. Translation continues only when tRNA anticodon best pairs with the second codon in the mRNA. When this occurs, hydrolysis of EF1 alpha GTPS, EF1 alpha GTP occurs. Third one is hydrolysis leads to the conformation change at the A site. GTP hydrolysis is another proof reading step. Fourth one is the alpha amino group of the second amino acid rack with the activate methionin in, on the tRNAi forming a peptide bond and peptide DL transferase reaction. So what is peptide DL transferase reaction catalyzes by the larger rRNA which is 28 as rRNA orientated the interacted atoms allowing the reaction to proceed we have peptide bond as we know this is the covalent bonds between two amino acids this one is a ribosome translocation moves one codon along the mRNA Next one is helped by the hydrolysis of EF2 GTP after the tRNAi now in the E side, second tRNA is now in the P side. And then next, translocation return the ribosome conformation so that the A side is open, beginning the another cycle of elongation. 
Last one is repetition of elongation until a stop colon is reached. Chain elongation in prokaryotes stage are similar to eukaryotes. Different proteins of factors EFTUGTP and EFGGTP. EFTU recurred tRNA with second amino acid attached. F -E EFTU mask the amino acid preventing a peptide bond forming until correct codon anticode. Best pairing result in GTP hydrosis. Now, GTP hydrosis release EFTU GTP and unmask the amino acid. So we need to know PEPTA DL transferase reaction here. It is catalyzed by the 23S RNA has PEPTA DL transferase activity. Primarily RNA mediated process. Proteins have a structure rock. So, and also we need to know translocation, EFGGTP, complex bind to the ribosome in a site. Factors binding center stimulate GTP hydrolysis, causes if conformation change that triggers translocation and release the EFGGTP. And we learned the loading. So, in the loading factors in period, we have EF1 alpha GTP. For prokaryote, EFTUGTP and peptidyl transferase reaction is in eukaryote catalyzed by larger 28S rRNA. In prokaryote, is catalyzed by 23S ribosome. Both rRNA mediated not protein. Lastly, translocation is factors eukaryote EFTUGTP for prokaryote EFGGTP. Now we can learn the translation termination. During the termination, a stop codon in the mRNA is recognized by a protein release factor. Translational machinery comes apart releasing a complete polypeptide chain. First, we start with recognition of stop codon. No tRNA can recognize a stop codon, no role of tRNA in termination. Protein release factor is shown RF, mimic the tRNA structure and anticodon. Release factors catalyze the release of the polypeptide chain from the polypeptide DL tRNA. And the other one is the release of the polypeptide chain. In here we will learn prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Let's start with prokaryotic. Release factor 1 and release factor 2 consist of four domains. Domain 2 contains a tripeptide anticodon motif important for stop codon recognition. Domain 3 has a conserved glyglyglate GGQ motif important for peptide tRNA hydrolysis. Induce the hydrolysis of the polypeptide linkage to tRNA. Release factor 3 GTP bond initiated the release of RF12 from the ribosome. Now we are learning eukaryotic. ERF1 shape is similar to tRNA and binds at the A side of the ribosome. Recognition of stop codon by its N terminal domain. ERF1 also has the GGQ motif. ERF3 GTP helps ERF1 to cleavage the polypeptide chain bond from tRNA. Polypeptide chain release into cytoplasm via the polypeptide exitunnel. Cleavage can only happen when ERF1 recognizes stop codon through reading. The last one is recycling of ribosomes. Essential for efficient translation, release of polypeptide chain ribosomes still bond to the mRNA and tRNA. Also here we will learn for prokaryotic and eukaryotic. And let's start again with prokaryotic. Two proteins involve ribosome recycling factors, which is RRF and EFGGTP. Ribosome recycling factor is a mimic of tRNA. Ribosome recycling factor recurred EFGGTP. GTP hydrolysis releases tRNAs from P and E sites. IF3 has dissociation of small and large ribosomal subunits. 
And now for the eukaryotic, ERF1 and ERF3 GDP still bound at A site. In eukaryotes, ribosome recycling occurs when this complex bond to the ABC E1 uses ATP. The separation of subunit occurs EIF1, EIF1A, EIF3 help to the dissociation and load onto the small subunit ready for the next round of translation. We need to know GTP as superfamily protein. So what are they? Function in several quality control steps of translation through freedom mechanism. Each stage of translation has one or more GTP binding proteins. These belong to the GTPA superfamily of switch proteins. Cycle between GDP and GTP bond. Hydrolysis of GTP turn to GTP is irreversible and causes a conformational change. And lastly, ensures high speed and accuracy. In this slide, I just summarize the overall of the uh, required for termination. And first, we learn recognition of stop codon, and then release of polypeptide chain. Lastly, recycling ribosomes. And you need to remember tRNA not involved in termination. tRNA and rRNA play reduced roles in termination. And here, like again, it's helpful for you to see what we use. And for recognition of stop codon, factors eukaryote is ERF1, a prokaryotic is RF1 and RF2. For the polypep release of polypeptide chain is eukaryotic ERF1, ERF3 GTP causes cleavage and prokaryotic RF12. GGQ motif causes hydrolysis of polypeptide chain linked to tRNA. Lastly, recycling ribosome, eukaryotic EIF1 and ERF3 GDP and ABCE1, EIF1, EIF1A, EIF3 for prokaryotic RRF, EFGGTP. IF3. So, what was the RRF? It was ribosome recycling factor. I know so many letters, but it will be useful if you study like this. Thank you guys. This is the end of my video. I hope you understand and I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, just let me know and see you soon.